Alright guys, what's up? Welcome back to another video on the Detroit Lions. Um, obviously today, as you can tell, we're going to be doing the last installation of the position projections, a uh, little mini series we've got going on. Um, you know, we've done this for the last couple weeks, uh, just going over who's going to start for the Lions next season, at what position, what the depth's going to look like, what you can expect for next season. Um, you know, and this is going to be the last installation of that video. I wanted to save defensive linemen for last because there's a lot of rumors about, you know, maybe Everson Griffin or Marcus Golden uh, coming to the Detroit Lions. And yesterday I even saw a rumor that the Lions might be looking to trade for Solomon Thomas. Um, I don't know how true any of these are. I don't know how true any of these rumors or, you know, discussions are. I don't know if they're even happening in the first place. Um, but obviously if they do materialize, if something does happen, if the Lions do end up signing somebody, I will be back and letting everybody know and updating the list and the roster and who's going to start. Um, but you know, before we get into the actual defensive linemen that are on the team, I have a couple announcements. Um, uh, Detroit fan man. Um, I saw you commented on one of my videos asking for a Joshua Garnett free agent breakdown. Um, but I also saw that you have some extra stuff after that and it, YouTube will not let me access, um, you know, the full comment. So I don't know if you deleted it or if it's a problem on YouTube's part. Um, but if you do want me to do that video, um, just DM me on Instagram. I will leave my Instagram up above my head. Um, and basically, if you just still want me to do it, I don't want to do a video for you and it not be what you want. So just send me the full comment, send me whatever you wanted to see, um, and I can definitely make that happen. I just don't want to make a video and that be not what you asked for because um, that would just waste my time and waste your time and I would have to do another video anyway. So, um, you know, I know we've talked a lot about offensive linemen. So, um, you know, just let me know what you want to see and uh, I can make that happen. Um, and obviously, most important of all, if you are enjoying the content, consider liking the video, subscribe to the YouTube channel, and sharing it with a Lions fan. Um, you know, we've had a couple of subscribers each day the last couple of days, um, and I'm very appreciative to everybody that does end up subscribing to my channel. Um, you know, so let's just keep it going. Uh, I really am enjoying doing this right now, and I'm really enjoying the support that I'm getting from most of you guys. Um, so with that being said, um, all the news is out of the way. Let's get into the actual video now. Um, what, who is going to play defensive line for the Detroit Lions in 2020? So the Lions currently have, you know, the defensive linemen on the roster right now are Austin Bryant, Trey Flowers, Deshaun Hand, Romeo Okora, Danny Shelton, Kevin Strong, Nick Williams, Jay Sean Cornell, and John Penicini. Um, so as we do with all of the other positions, we're going to work away from the bottom to the top of the depth chart, talk about the roles, what you're, what you should project. For next season what you should expect what they did last season and you know it will the unit improve as a whole or get worse um so we'll start with jay sean cornell the seventh round pick from the detroit lions in this past draft the last draft pick that we ended up selecting um he was a defensive lineman out of ohio state um coming out of high school this guy had a lot of hype he was either he was the number one player in his school um and i think he was a number one player in his state or something like that um I'm not quite sure, so if somebody wants to let me know in the comments, um, I would be very appreciative, but I'm pretty sure he was at least the number one in his school, if not the state. Um, obviously, ended up committing to Ohio State, um, and unfortunately, when he got there, kind of got buried on the depth chart behind the Boses and the Chase Youngs and, you know, all the, you know, big name guys going in the top five um, every single year. So that is unfortunate for him, but in his last season at Ohio State, he did end up getting some playing time, and he did a very good job with that playing time. Um, he ended up playing in 13 games for the Buckeyes last season, totaled 30 tackles. Seven of the half of those were for loss, and he had four sacks. Um, so obviously, that's a decent stat line, but you also have to think that Chase Young took 16 and a half sacks away from him. And just that presence of Chase Young makes the quarterback get rid of the ball that much faster. Um, so that could also be a factor of why his sack numbers were so low. Um, I don't think that he's a bad defensive lineman at all. I think that he's very good. Um, he has a high motor. He never gives up on a, on a play. Um, he plays through the whistle, which is something that the Detroit Lions are going to like a lot um, out of their players. He just is relentless on his pass rush, and he's not going to give up until either the quarterback's on the ground or the whistle is blown dead. Um, so I think that, you know, obviously seventh round picks don't always make the team, but I think that Jay Sean has a very good chance to make the team just because um, of his high motor and the fact that he obviously has the talent to do great things at the defensive line position. Um, so moving on, next we have John Penicini, the sixth round draft pick out of Utah. Um, and this guy is, you know, he has a very similar skill set, if you want to compare him to an NFL player, to Damon Snacks Harrison. 
Um, obviously was a Detroit Lion last year, did not play his best, played very, very poorly, and I think that was part of the reason that the Lions defense struggled so much. When we traded for him two seasons ago, um, he was playing at an elite level, and our and our Detroit Lions defense actually finished in the top 10 um, in all defenses two years ago, um, and then obviously he came into this season and his production dropped horrifically. Um, it just wasn't a good sight to see him out there. Um, it just seemed like he didn't want to be there. His projection drop, production dropped, and then the entire defense just got worse and worse. And we, obviously, as many Lions fans know, our defense was absolutely atrocious last season. I think we're bringing in somebody with a similar skill set, somebody that can, you know, come in and not necessarily replace him. Um, but if we have to rotate guys in, um, have a very skim similar skill set to, you know, plug up the middle, not let a lot of running lanes open, not let a lot of gaps open and not let the running back get huge gains uh, past the defensive line. Um, he's just going to, you know, eat up the offensive line. He's going to, you know, close holes before they're there. He's going to stop the running back so that, you know, the linebackers have a clearer vision so they can hit the running back or he's just going to stop him by himself. Um, I don't know if he'll have a lot of playing time this season, but I think that his skill set is what we're looking for in a defensive tackle and a nose tackle, someone who can stop the run very well, plug up holes, and uh, I think that that's going to give him a good chance to make the 53-man uh, roster. Um, so moving on to the next player, to players that were actually on the team last season or were, you know, at least they're NFL veterans at this point, um, we have Kevin Strong. Um, Strong was a Detroit Lion last season. He, he played in eight games. He had five total tackles, so obviously didn't play a ton, um, didn't play a lot of snaps, didn't get a lot of production. I believe he had a sack on Aaron Rodgers in the first Packers game, but it got called back due to penalties. Um, so, you know, you keep that in mind if, and I'm pretty sure that's who it was that got a sack on Aaron Rodgers, but if it was not, then I apologize for giving you guys false information. Um, but I'm pretty sure that's who it was. Um, so obviously a very okay depth player wasn't going to play a lot probably won't play a lot this season might not even make the team this season um, just because of the competition that we've brought in to replace Asian Robinson and Snacks Harrison and the rookies that we've brought in to just compete for spots on the team and make everybody at the defensive line better so we could put out the best defensive line possible. Um, so he might not make the team, um, but I, you know, he obviously didn't contribute a ton for the Lions. And, you know, I, I don't like to see anybody be cut, but if he were to be cut, it wouldn't be the worst case situation for the Lions. Um, so moving on to Austin Bryant, he was a fourth round pick out of the University of Clemson um, two years ago at this point. Um, he played in four games for the Lions last season and had eight tackles. Um, you know, so obviously if you just look at his base stats, not very good. Um, but he was injured for a majority of the season. He actually wasn't even able to get on the field until late in the season. And I'm pretty sure even when he was on the field, he wasn't at 100%. Uh, I think he tried to come back and prove that he can play for the Lions, prove that he wasn't a bust, you know, not a bust, but prove that he had value to add to the defensive line. And I just don't think that he was 100% healthy when playing. So you know, don't look at his production and say that hey, this was a wasted draft pick just yet. Um, obviously, wait for him to have a full season where he is healthy. Um, and the next season, if he's healthy all season and still doesn't play a lot and still doesn't get a lot of production, then you can look at it and say, we should have drafted somebody else. But um, I still think that this is a player that can come in. Um, when it, Last year, he had a lot of comparisons to Trey Flowers, actually, um, who is also a Detroit Lion. Um, you know, he had a lot of physical comparisons and, you know, just... Technical comparisons to Trey Flowers, he's a very similar player in the way that he plays the game. Um, so, you know, look for that next season. Trey Flowers will mentor him a little bit. He'll be able to actually get on the field and have a fair shot at, you know, getting playing time on the Detroit Lions next season. Um, so look out for him next season. I think that's a player that will have the one of the bigger steps from year one to year two. Um, so moving on um, to free agent, well, Moving on to a free agent signing that we signed this past offseason, um, we're looking at Nick Williams. Um, Nick Williams obviously played for the Chicago Bears last season, um, and he we got him for a very cheap deal, which is surprising um, because he had a very good season last year. Um, and granted, he hasn't had a very good NFL career so far, but last year he broke out. Um, he had six sacks. He played, in, he played in all 16 games. He had 42 tackles, six sacks, and four forced fumbles. Um... So obviously a very good season for Nick Williams. He broke out. Um, this was the first season that he's really contributed a lot for an organization. Um, and you might say, you know, why bring a guy in if he hasn't proven himself? Well, 
as I said, he played for the Chicago Bears. So next season, at least six of the games, um, he practiced against the Bears every single day last year. So he's kind of know how to beat some of those guys. Um, he played against the Packers twice a year last year. So uh, he played against the Vikings twice a year um, and the NFC North playing a very similar schedule. Um, you know, so he's going to be playing against a lot of the same competition. So I wouldn't expect his his play, um, his level of play to decline too much in the you know 2020 season for the Detroit Lions. I think this is a very underrated signing for the Detroit Lions. And I think that he can come in and, you know, maybe be that sleeper to get six, seven sacks next season. Um, you know, why Trey Flowers is, you know, getting the double team while Julian O'Quara is being blocked. I think Nick Williams can come right up the middle um, and not really be a name that they're preparing for necessarily. And he could take a lot of people by surprise and, um, you know, get some good production for the Detroit Lions next season. Um, so the next guy, another free agent that we brought in from New England, um, Danny Shelton. He signed a two-year, $8 million contract. So again, very, very cheap. Um, he was a first-round pick a few years ago for the Cleveland Browns. Um, and I don't think that he was, some people might say he was a bust. I don't think so, um, especially not with the Patriots. With the Patriots last season, he ended up playing in 16 games. He had 61 total tackles, three sacks, and a forced fumble. Um, and obviously, as I've said numerous times when talking about former Patriots players, the Detroit Lions play a very similar style defense to the Patriots. So if somebody produces in the Patriots system, expect them to produce that well or very similarly, if not better, um, in the Detroit Lions system. Um, just because we run a very similar defense, very similar schemes. Um, so that's... You know, look out for that. I think this was a very underrated signing also. Uh, I think this is a guy that's going to replace um, Damon Harrison. I think this is going to be a guy that can not only stop the run, but also get after the passer a little bit. Um, and I think with his help, if he can produce like Damon Harrison did in 2018, um, you know, the Detroit Lions could have a very good defense again. Um, you know, I think the run defense can get better. And I think that if the run defense gets better, our defense as a whole gets better. Because um, I think our secondary is good enough to hold up. And I just think our run defense is what's getting gashed and what is not, is what is letting the Lions down, um, so to speak. So I think that if he can help fix that, the Lions can make a big jump in the defense of production next season. Um, and obviously, these last couple of guys are going to be very big producers for the Detroit Lions, hopefully. Um, so one of those guys is Romeo Okwara, obviously brothers to Julian Okwara, who we drafted in the third round. If you haven't seen the prospect breakdown on that, um, on Julian, go check it out. Um, you know, it pretty much tells you everything you need to know about Julian Okwara, who was also in the linebackers video. Um, but he will not be in the defensive line video because he's not necessarily a defensive lineman. Um, but his brother Romeo is, um, Romeo played in 14 games for the Detroit Lions. He had one forced fumble, one and a half sacks and, uh, 28 tackles, um, you know, and you might say that that was a very best season considering that two years ago, he had seven and a half sacks. Um, but if you actually look a little bit deeper into the stats, if you go to QB hits, um, last season he had 10 QB hits while playing less minutes, you know, less time for the Detroit Lions. Um, and two years ago when he had seven, seven and a half sacks, he only, he had 14 quarterback hits. Um, so it wasn't that he wasn't getting the quarterback. It just, the quarterback was getting rid of the ball, uh, before he could get there. Um, he was still putting pressure on the quarterback at a pretty similar rate. Um, obviously he missed a couple of games this season, uh, where he didn't two seasons ago. Um, so, you know, he had very similar pressure. He had very similar QB hits. Um, he just couldn't necessarily finish the play. He couldn't get there that half a second faster, uh, to get the quarterback on the ground, to get the ball out, um, to swat the ball and, um, you know, I think a lot of people um, looking at base stats would say he had a very, um, you know, his production dropped a ton last season. Um, and I don't think that's necessarily true. His sack production dropped, yes. Um, but the the pressure in his game, the pressure that he put on quarterbacks did not drop all that much. And I think that he can have a resurgence next season Um you know, with the Detroit Lions, I think that he's going to be a rotational guy again. And I think that he can have a better season next year with a little bit of help on the defensive line um, in the middle with the defensive tackles that we ended up signing to replace Ashawn and Damon Harrison. Um, so then we get to Deshaun Hand. Deshaun Hand was a rookie two years ago, um, three years ago at this point. I don't know. He's a NFL veteran. Um, he hasn't played a whole lot. Um, he had a very good rookie season, and then last season he was injured a ton, um, could not stay on the field, unfortunately, and, um, you know, he's a very good player when he's on the field. He's a very impactful player when he's actually out there. Um, he just could not get on the field this season. He only played in eight games and had six tackles, one of those for, uh, one of those tackles being for a loss, um, so, 
you know, obviously, uh, if you look at his stats from his rookie season, he was very good. At, uh, he got a couple sacks, a couple forced fumbles, a couple fumble recoveries. He took the ball away on the defensive line, um, and he's a very good um, NFL talent. Um, unfortunately, I don't I know what was wrong with him this year. I can't remember off the top of my head, um, but hopefully he can come back next season fully healthy, fully re-geared to have a breakout season next year and come back and, you know, prove to everybody that that first season was not a fluke. Um and then the last uh, edge rusher that we will be talking about today, the last defensive lineman, is the $90 million man himself, Trey Flowers. Uh, again, another former New England Patriots player. We brought him in last offseason to, you know, we paid him a lot of money. Um, and he, you know, he did okay last year. He played in 15 games. He had two forced fumbles, seven sacks, 51 total tackles, and he had 21 quarterback hits. Um you know, and that, that sounds like an okay season, right? That sounds like somebody that, you know, is reliable, can get you those sacks, can get you those QB pressures, you know, can turn the ball over a couple times, but something to keep, uh, you know, something to keep in mind when you're looking at Trey Flowers, he wasn't really healthy until about week four or five. Um, he had a shoulder injury that he had surgery on, um, really didn't have that power, really didn't have that explosiveness that uh, we saw from him late in the season until about week five against the Packers is when he really started to get back to that Trey Flowers that was in New England. Um, so hopefully if he can stay healthy this offseason, come in and, um, you know, get get off with a running start, he can definitely get to double-digit sacks this season. Um, he really took off in the second half of the season when he was fully healthy um, and really, you know, proved that he can be worth that $90 million if he's healthy for the Detroit Lions. Um, you know, some quick takeaways, um, you might've, you know, noticed this as I was talking, but a lot of the Detroit Lions defensive linemen last year were injured coming into the season, were injured during the season and could not play a full season for the Detroit Lions. Um, and I think that was really the story of the Detroit Lions last year. They just could not stay healthy, could not stay on the field at any position really. Um, but defensive line was obviously one of the worst, one of the hardest hit. And, um, you know, if the Detroit Lions could come in next season with a completely healthy defensive line, um, which might be a lot to ask, but, you know, it shouldn't be. You know, the Detroit Lions players aren't doing a whole lot right now. They're stuck at home like everybody else. So obviously they can do workouts, they can stay in shape, but they're, they shouldn't be doing anything that, you know, is super grueling, super, um, you know, taxing on their bodies. So they should have the opportunity to come in next season, be fully healthy, get off to a running start and get our defense back to an elite level. Um... So that's all I got for today. Obviously, if the Detroit Lions end up bringing in a pass rusher or somebody on the defensive line, I will make a video, let you guys know, um, let you know, uh, you know, how that changes the list a little bit of who should be starting, who shouldn't be. Um, but that's all I got for right now. If you enjoy the context, start liking the video, subscribe to the channel, and uh, I will see you guys later next time there's Lions news or tomorrow with another video. Um, and with that being said, uh, goodbye. That's all I got for right now. I will see you guys later.